In training for rescue, just like with fall protection equipment, it's gonna be dependent on both the scenario and the equipment that is selected as appropriate for the scenario. However, one of the elements of rescue training that is a little different than fall protection training is that once you train people in the proper procedures, even if it's a very simplistic methodology, such as a, a simple ladder, or we're gonna use a scissor lift to retrieve the worker, as long as it, it follows the policies and procedures that we lay out and the planning, and everybody's communicated and understanding. But when you get into some of the more technical elements of rescue, and there are many, is that those rescuers need to be very, very adept at what they're doing and be prepared to make changes to that plan based off of when an event happens or an incident occurs. Although yes, we can predict a lot of it, there are still unpredictable things that may occur. So they might have to modify that plan. So they have to be super knowledgeable as well as this is not thought process. This needs to become muscle memory. So one of the encouragements for rescuers is that they regularly practice in a safe environment the skills so that when the, when the event occurs, that they're not thinking about what the procedure is. They are absolutely able to react and react safely to retrieve that worker from this at heights, oh my gosh, condition. In any rescue scenario, fall arrest scenario, where we could potentially have a hanging victim, Rescue is essential, not because it's a law, because you have a potential hanging victim. Depending on the standard or, or study that you look at, the average amount of time a, a victim has to remain in suspension is around 15 minutes. Of course, using suspension trauma straps or other devices such as that can increase the amount of time that, it, that the victim can remain in that condition awaiting the rescue. But if we're not prepared, people are humans and they're gonna do what they need to do and they're gonna get laser focused. So there's a bunch of different ways. I always use the KISS method, keep it simple. Using a simple ladder, a boom lift or a scissor lift to retrieve the victim as long as it's the right tool for the job, then that's perfectly acceptable. But at times we have to get a little more technical. So in this next demonstration, we're gonna take our victim and we're gonna start down here on the ground. We're gonna climb up into the air, remain protected. We're gonna get the rescue equipment remotely attached to them, lift them up enough so that we can disengage them from their anchorage and lower them down to the ground to safety because most of the time going down is where your rescue or your medical professionals will be. But there are times that going up is a necessity. So we have to look at the scenario to assure that we have the right tool for the job, same as any fall protection equipment. All right, once the victim has fallen, at some point somebody's gonna scream, somebody's gonna make the call at, that we have a victim. And then of course the rescuer should remain calm cool and collected and always be protected. The rescuer's number one priority is still the rescuer at all times. So we're gonna get ourselves up there and we're always gonna talk to the victim and make sure the victim's okay and then we're gonna direct the environment. So we're gonna tell somebody to call 911 and then we're gonna make sure that people are on point. So once we get climbed up here, we'll get protected and we'll talk to the victim. All right, victim, how you doing? Don't worry about it. Looks like you're having a pretty bad day. Let me get connected and safe up here. We're gonna get you down tunnel pretty darn quick. So every rescue piece of equipment that uses mechanical advantage must have a minimum of a three to one mechanical advantage. So as that's a little further than I want to be for that swing fall, let me get connected to here. So as our victim's dangling there, we're just gonna to continue to talk to him, make sure that he's okay. Then I'm gonna open up the bag. I'm gonna reach back in, make sure everything's secure. Come out here, grab it. Take my sling or whatever anchorage that I need to be necessary to get this attached. Get it functional, get it over there, get it close to him, get it attached to me. And then we're gonna start what they call measuring rope. So we're just gonna measure out the rope down to our victim to make sure that we can get it attached. This type of rescue is so that the rescuer can remain in a safer environment and remain up here instead of rappelling down and attaching to the victim. There's numerous versions of this bad boy or this type of system and they're all pretty good. They're all effective but what makes it most effective and will always make it most effective is having very well trained and well practiced rescuers. The whole goal is to have those rescuers ready to go and hopefully never use it. If we're doing our fall protection well, we're gonna be prepared for all kinds of scenarios. Now once I've measured out the rope, grab my remote pole like this, 
get it pulled through. Then we're just gonna bring the rope up here and get it connected. Again, this is a system. There's a lot of different systems available. But you can see where if you're not practiced, you're not aware of what's going on, or you get in a rush where this can go badly. Because if I drop any of this stuff and I can't retrieve it, my rescue capabilities have just significantly changed. So this little device is just a remote device that is designed to attach to the rope so that I can remotely attach it to my worker's D-ring, get that attached, get it popped up here, get my pole out of the way. Then we're gonna start pulling slack out of this thing. We're gonna raise him up just enough so we can get him disconnected from his lanyard, because you don't wanna just cut it. And we're just gonna bring him up a bit. Just enough to get some slack in his anchorage or his lanyard. Then we're gonna tell him rope down so I don't hit him with the rope. Attach it like this, and then we are just going to slowly, using rope control and the brake, repel him down to the ground, and then we're going to have somebody on the ground receive him to make sure that he doesn't just try to run away. But once he's down on the ground, now he's no longer hanging in suspension, no longer waiting for that 15 minute, that restricted blood flow, and he's back down on the ground, and we're safe. In some rescue scenarios, it doesn't have to be highly technical, it just has to be highly effective. So with using a rescue ladder like this that we're going to show, you're going to see where something very simplistic can be effective. So we have our victim, Dan, down there, and as he's waiting for his rescue to occur, he's going to use his trauma straps, so that way he's not hanging in suspension for any prolonged amount of time, relieving that tourniquet on the femoral artery. Once he gets established, we'll actually deploy the ladder and show what's going on. Dan, you all set? How you doing down there, man? You ready to get out of that position? Yes, All right, so a rescue ladder such as this, it's a pretty simple device. There's instructions right on it, and one of them is open the bag, and of course then it says reach into the bag and get out your equipment. So at this point, in rescue, we want to look for an anchor that's at least 3,000 pounds strong or five times the weight of the worker. In some cases, if you can attach to the same anchor that's just fallen off of, that is perfectly acceptable as well, as long as it's in good condition. So at first, I'm just going to connect the ladder like this, and then I'm going to drop the ladder down. And I'm going to, of course, let my victim know that it's coming. So what you're going to see, Dan, is I'm going to drop this orange bag by you, and I'm going to try not to hit you with it, all right? But you're going to see the ladder come down to your right, to your right. Okay. As the ladder deploys out like that, Dan can easily reach over and grab it and then he can just stand up in the ladder. Even if he was incapable of climbing at this point because he was freaked out or anything like that, don't climb up just yet, my friend. He is at least no longer hanging in suspension. He's standing on something, because it ain't so easy to climb these. But each one of the rungs is reinforced and he can easily do this. But this system actually has one other benefit and it's called a belay system. So we're gonna drop the belay down to Dan and we're gonna ask Dan to attach the belay system or this device, which is nothing more than a carabiner, attached to a rope that's attached to the rescue ladder, and ask Dan to affix this to him. Hey, Dan, can you reach that? Can you get that sucker attached? Wait, it'll come back to you. All right, go ahead and attach that to your D-ring, man. And the idea here is that as he tries to climb up, whether he's coming all the way up, or we're just climbing him up enough to get him disconnected from his anchorage, we don't want him to have another fall, because climbing a ladder can be a challenging thing after you've just been a fall victim. So all we're gonna do is pull the slack out of here. Now, this is a one-to-one -one mechanical. I can't lift Dan. However, as Dan climbs, go ahead and ascend a rung there, Dan. And as he climbs up, all I'm doing is continuing to pull slack because if he accidentally loses his grip or his balance in any way or leans back too far, go ahead and Dan, go ahead and let your feet go for a second. Dan doesn't have another fall. And Dan, how many rungs have you climbed now? Two. Two, two rungs is enough to create enough slack in his, in his system so I can get him disconnected and then I can drop it and I can lower it, Dan, to your left, to your left, so drop that sucker down. Now, Dan, do you want to continue to climb up or do you want to climb down? Okay, can you get your feet back on the rungs? Yes, sir. Beautiful, all right, give me a little slack. Step up, there you go, a little bit more, beautiful. Go ahead and climb down, buddy. Go ahead and climb down. 
And as he continues to climb down, all I'm going to do is this. And if he pulls too hard, it'll pull out of my finger and he'll be arrested just like that. So he pulled it out of my finger because he went too fast. Go ahead and step up, Dan. Let me get a little slack from you. Beautiful. You can climb back down now, man. And then he can climb back down and he touches the ground. Give him a little slack. And again, now our victim, in a very fast, effective, and efficient manner, is rescued from his hanging position. With the necessity of inspecting the equipment, if a fall occurs, all the equipment, the anchor, the body harness, the connecting device, shall be immediately removed from service. It is highly recommended that if you have a successful fall, that you contact the manufacturer of the equipment being used, because many have policies that they will replace fall used equipment 100% free of charge, only with a little bit of paperwork and understanding of how it was used.